Hello, everyone, and welcome to the One Stop Co op Shop. This is Colin, and today we are going to play the Murder at the Excelsior Hotel side scenario for Arkham Horror. See, here's the issue we have so much content right now with our uh, four to five content creators that I still have not had the first Arkham video live yet, and I keep wanting to play Arkham. But I want to have your guys' help on which scenario I go to next. So I thought, well, this would be a great time to have a side scenario. We talked a while back about having Mike and I try and play Murder at the Excelsior Hotel, and I'm just deciding to do it on the channel with, we're gonna do Joe and Patrice. We're gonna pretend that they're having this side scenario after they had that conversation with the black cat and they're trying to figure out how to get themselves into the dream world they decided to stay at the excelsior hotel and this is what's going to happen <laughs> now i'm going to say i have never played this this will be a blind playthrough so yeah we'll see how it goes uh, but before it, i do get to use our six xp now three of the xp i have to use to do this side scenario so that provides me with three xp left for joe i'm just going to go ahead and grab that charisma because he's got two uh allies that i'd love to have out on the table so he's going to do that for his three then for patrice since she has the arcane research she can upgrade ward of protection for free because she has two arcane uh arcane research so she can reduce the cost of the first upgrade on a spell card by two so we're going to just swap out a regular spell card or a regular ward of protection for a level two and then we'll use two out of the three of our experience We'll get rid of the prophecy card and we're going to go ahead and grab it cornered because that will be amazing for her you can dis one discard one card from your hand and you get plus two skill value for the skill test awesome so with that let's go ahead and jump into the story i just want you to see here playing the murder at the excelsior hotel side story costs each investigator three experience points just so you know there have been reports of strange occurrences at Arkham's Excelsior Hotel for over a month now. Disappearances, bizarre sightings, sudden closures, sometimes for days at a time, seemingly without warning. It's like something out of a ghost story, but you know better than to simply dismiss these rumors. Too many people have whispered about the Excelsior, and to make matters worse, it seems the stories have only grown more unsettling in the last week. It's time somebody looked into it all. And maybe we'll find a way to get into our dreams there. <laughs> we can take a nap. You've tried going to the police, but the grizzled and world-weary Sergeant Monroe has dismissed you every time. You've been left to investigate on your own. Asking around at all the local hotspots yields no leads. Thelma's Diner, Hibby's Roadhouse, La Bella Luna, each visit leaves you with only more questions. That is, until today. While walking down Central Avenue in downtown, minding your own business, you bump into a man in a long trench coat. You begin to apologize, but he simply continues walking briskly away from you. It isn't until you return home that you find the note in your pocket, one that wasn't there before. I have answers. Room 225, tonight, come alone. They're watching. Uncertain of what else you can do at this point, you begin making preparations to meet this mysterious person. If there's only one investigator in the game, proceed to intro 2. If there's more than one, go to intro 3. The Excelsior is quite busy tonight. Either the rumors haven't phased these guests, or the stories have given the hotel a new allure. Everything seems normal. Hotel staff carrying luggage and cleaning supplies throughout the lobby and the main stairway. The man behind the front desk greets you with a curt nod and a thin smile. A uniformed security guard reads the latest Arkham advertiser in the corner, and yet you can't get the note's final warning out of your mind. You stride quickly across the lobby and up the stairs, taking some measure of comfort in the knowledge that you at least contacted others you could trust, letting them know of your whereabouts and intent. Your clandestine meetings have rarely gone as planned, especially lately, and it never hurts to have some measure of backup. You stand before the blood-red door to room 225. Take a deep breath and knock. There's no going back now. You sit in an armchair in the suite's living room, watching as the man who slipped you the note paces about nervously. He rambles about secret meetings and watchful stuff. The entire time you find yourself glancing at the coffee table in front of you and the carved dagger that rests there. He pauses for a moment, pours himself a drink, and raises the glass to his lips with a shaky grip. He then pours a second drink and hands it to you. This is all going to sound crazy, he says, his voice little more than a whisper. He glances every darting shadow and twitches at every creak that the old building makes. I'm beginning to think. I'm beginning to feel crazy, but there's too much going on here to just ignore. Then I've been a part of it long enough. 
You listen closely, but his words are starting to run together. His voice is ethereal and wispy, like wind at the end of a long tunnel. You blink rapidly. Your vision blurs. The next thing you know, you're on your feet. Your glass drops to the floor, and then... Ah, crap. Sounds like we might have killed somebody here. <laughs> we have a knife on the table. Yeah, ah, something in that drink. So here we go. Gather all cards from Murder at the Excelsior encounter set. Set the following encounter cards aside. Then construct the Act and Agenda deck using only Act 1 and 2 and Agendas 1 and 2 from Murder at the Excelsior Hotel. Set all 10 copies of the True Culprit aside out of play. The lead investigator begins play with the Bloodstained Dagger story asset under their control, and that's Patrice. Find each of the story assets from the five set aside encounter sets and shuffle them together into a separate deck. This deck is called the Leads deck. Place this deck near the scenario reference card. Then we need to put the following locations into play. Uh, the lead investigator begins in play at room 225, and then we will have Joe start in the foyer, set each other location out of, out of, uh, aside out of play, and then set the following cards aside out of play, all three copies of the Arkham Officer, Sergeant Monroe, Story Asset, and What Have You Done, Weakness. <laughs> Shuffle the remainder of your encounter cards to form the encounter deck. You are now ready to begin playing. Do not proceed to the following interlude until you are instructed to do so. And here is their suggested layout. When you come to, you are standing over the man's body. You recoil immediately at the grisly sight. Multiple stab wounds perviate his chest. Blood spills onto the floor. What in the world happened here? And why can't you remember a thing? If there's only one investigator, okay, we have more than one. So what happened? Your head is spinning as you try to make sense of the situation. Empty bottles are scattered about the room. Your hands tingle. The shadows seem to coil and writhe around you. Were you drugged? Or is this something else entirely? We can take an action to spend uh, two clues as a group. Draw the top card of the leads deck. And I have the leads deck here, and that's those different uh, uh, asset items. And then our objective is... If the investigators control two lead assets, we get to advance. So we're trying to find two of these leads. And then just so you guys can see, uh, we have, if we draw this, the skull, X is the number of guest enemies in play. And then uh, the cultist minus one. If there's an innocent enemy in the victory display, reveal another chaos token. Then we have the rock minus three. You may place one of your clues on your location and treat this as a minus one. Oh, that's interesting. And then finally, the funny looking one, uh, minus three. If you fail and there's an innocent enemy in the victory display, take one horror. Ooh, ooh. I might be stretching myself here. You know, Patrice always already has three horror because she started with three mental trauma. Here we have our locations. We have our restaurant. Our restaurant is connected to the second floor hall as well as the foyer. The foyer is connected to the second floor hall. Uh, then the second floor hall is the only one that's connected to room 20, 225, which is the only one connected to the suite balcony. So let's go ahead and look at the foyer and room 225. The foyer is a grand hall of polished tile and sweeping stairs. Guests and staff move through the vast room in an almost dreamlike state. Or is that just your imagination? We have here a two shroud location. We can spend an action to resign. You flee the scene of the crime. Oh, that's terrible. Forced. When you attempt to move out of the foyer, while there's at least one guard enemy here, you have to test your agility. Uh, where X is the number of guest enemies here. If you fail, you must spend one additional action to move out of the foyer. The rug on the floor is soaked with blood. Broken glass litters the couch and coffee table in the living room. The window is open, a chill breeze flowing through the long curtains. Here we have a three shroud location. We can test either our willpower, our might, or our investigation. If you succeed, remember that the investigators uh, tidied up the room. If you succeed, remember that the investigators hid the body. If you succeed, remember that the investigators cleaned up the blood. <laughs> okay, we probably are going to need to do one of those. Let's go ahead and draw our starting hands. We'll start with Patrice since she's the lead investigator. She will draw five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Ugh, this does not look great. Uh, well, I mean, these could help me. Yeah, I could keep say your prayers. No, you know what? I'm just going to take the whole hand and I'm going to mulligan the whole thing. Let's try that again, shall we? <laughs> I'm open for at least an asset, uh, maybe. I mean, you know, at the beginning, it's always good to be able to have an asset that you can play. Oh, I've got my leveled up ward of protection. Oh, I've got Peter Sylvester. That's at least good. Oh, we get plus one to our agility, which is, well two to a three um yeah i'm gonna have to keep it i do have my winging it which can help us we can help have that help us investigate put it in our discard pile and we can use it to investigate again which is kind of cool 
I'm realizing I did not show you the bloodstained dagger. So you can use this to fight, and you get plus two to your fight for this attack. So that would put it at a four, which is reasonable. Uh, you can also exhaust the bloodstained dagger and deal one, or uh, take one horror. Then your fight, you get plus two and plus one damage for the attack. If this attack defeats an enemy, you get to draw a card. <laughs> so you have to take some horror to do it, but you could actually really use this for a strong attack, which we might have to. We'll have to see. Patrice, what have you done? This is terrible. <laughs> I didn't realize that we did the murder. Oh my gosh. Here we go for Joe. Joe will draw five. One, two, three, four, five. And let's see what we got. We have Vicious Blow, a couple deductions. Ooh, the Enchanted Blade. I'm definitely going to keep the Enchanted Blade. Uh, these can help us get additional clues. I can give up both of those clues in one, one fell swoop. I like Vicious Blow. So I think I'm going to keep those three and let's uh, shuffle these in. We're all shuffled up. Let's draw two more. We get a Steadfast and we get a Shortcut. Nice. It's actually not a bad starting hand, other than I don't have an ally. I was kind of hoping for one of my allies. Let's go ahead and start off with Joe, since we know for sure he is not guilty. <laughs> Let's play this Enchanted Blade for Action 1. It's going to cost us three resources to play that, and then we have some sort of weapon in case we need it. Next, let's go ahead and try and investigate the foyer. Currently, our intellect is 4 to the 2 here. I'm going to go ahead and use Deduction which will increase our uh, total intellect to five. And then it says, if this skill test is successful while investigating, discover one additional clue at this location. Oh, and of course, I totally forgot to reveal the top card of my hunch deck. We have play only as your first action, discover one clue at your location too, if there's an enemy. But yeah, I would not want to actually play that anyways, because I was assuming to, I was going to play the deduction card. Uh, I love the hunch deck, just I'm terrible at remembering flipping it. <laughs> So we're right now at a five to a two. Five to a two, let's shuffle up our tokens and reveal one, and we get a minus two. Uh, that means we're at a three to a two. We have succeeded, and we've collected both clues. So that was two actions. And then I think for our third action, we'll go ahead and spend those two clues. It states here that we can spend two clues to draw the top card of the leads deck. So let's go ahead and draw that, and we have Sinister Solution. Resolution. Put into play in your play area. When you are defeated, give control of this to another investigator. Uh, the flavor test. The flask is ice cold and the sickly green liquid within has the consistency of syrup. It smells vaguely of fish and ozone. Hanging from the top of the flask is a tag stamped test one. Hmm. Yeah, someone probably drugged us. We've completed our three actions. Let's go ahead and flip ourselves over. Let's go over to Patrice. First thing we'll do with Patrice, it makes sense to place out Peter. He is going to help us with Sanity Soak, so that's going to, I wish I could use Sanity to pay for him. We'll spend three resources to put him out. He uh, gives us plus one to our agility, and then after your turn ends, you can heal one horror from him. So we can give him one horror, and then he can heal it at the end of the round. Patrice is pretty terrible at investigating right now. I have nothing in my hand to help with that. And I have nothing really in my hand other than overpower to try and help with this test. But I'd only still be one above what I need to, su to succeed. So I think for action two, I'm just going to check out this sweet balcony. The balcony affords a high vantage point over the rest of Arkham. Leaning over the rail, your mind reels at the thought of falling from such a height. Well, hopefully we won't fall from such a height, right? We have here, choose a humanoid enemy at Sweet Balcony and test either your might or your agility. If you succeed, take one direct horror and defeat the chosen enemy. If the enemy is elite, deal two damage to it instead. This action does not provoke attacks of opportunity. Hmm. Sounds like you are pushing them off the balcony. <laughs> okay, we've done uh, two actions. Uh, do we want to try... Hmm. I think for my third action, all I'm going to do is generate another resource. I know that sounds terrible, but that way, if, when I generate another resource next round, I'll have enough for St. Hubert's Key if we happen to draw it. We'll end the investigation phase, move to the enemy phase, there's no enemies out. We'll move to upkeep, we'll reset everything, we're going to ready all of our characters. We're going to unfortunately have to discard all these cards in our hand, which includes the Ward of Protection, so that was actually useless. Oh well. <laughs> and then we're going to draw up one, two, three, four, five for Patrice. And let's see, what does she get? She gets another Peter Sylvester. Perfect. See, I told you, St. Hubert's Key. We were going to draw it. We're also going to generate our uh, fourth resource so we can play that. 
For Joe, he's just going to draw one card and he's going to gain his third resource. And he gets Randolph Carter from the Dream Eaters uh, actual campaign. That's pretty cool. That's going to give him plus one willpower and plus one in intellect. We will also have to shuffle up his hunch deck. And I need to remember to reveal that at the beginning of the investigation phase. We'll move to the mythos phase, place our first of three doom. Now let's draw our encounter cards. Our first card for Patrice will be a hotel guest. Spawn the nearest hall location. It's aloof and it patrols. So what does patrol mean? During the enemy phase, each ready unengaged enemy with the patrol keyword moves to a connecting location along the shortest path towards the designated location. So the designated location is the crime scene location here. If there are multiple locations that qualify as the designated location, the lead investigator may choose. If an enemy with a patrol would be compelled to move to a location which is blocked, that enemy does not move. So it's going to be moving around. It's currently not an enemy. I have a feeling it might turn into that. <laughs> I don't know. We can parlay. And if we do that, we can test our, our willpower or our intellect. If you succeed, we can discard the hotel guest. So the closest hall is the second floor. That'll be the one. Our card for Joe will be a Conspicuous Staff. Spawn the nearest crime scene location. I'll have to look to see which one has that. It will prey on the one with the most clues. It's a hunter. Hmm. So this is actually going to be an enemy. So it will engage us and you have to fight. So a crime scene location. The nearest crime scene location is room 225. This says crime scene and also the sweet bal balcony says crime scene. But since we're in the foyer, the closest one is room 225. Let's go ahead and start that investigation phase. The first thing is Joe's going to reveal the top card of his hunch deck. He can play this as his first action. It's the same thing. Scene of the crime, that's not going to help because he's in a location with no clues. Let's start off with Patrice this time. First thing we're going to do is spend the four resources to get St. Hubert's key out. Thank goodness. So that will give us plus one willpower and plus one intellect, but we do have minus two sanity. Two, four, five. We only have two sanity left. But we do have Peter here that can soak, well, at least one. <laughs> I need to upgrade him next. Then for action two, we're going to gain one resource. So then action three, we can wing it. We're going to wing it. We're going to play this from our discard pile. So the location that we are investigating gets a minus one shroud. If you've played winging it from your discard pile, discover one additional clue if you succeed. So we can discover both clues here. Uh, we've paid the one resource. We are at a two plus one, which is three. The sweet balcony is at a two from this, but then thanks to the winging it, it's actually only a one. So we're at a three to a one, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and play Unexpected Courage, so we make it a five to a one, because why the heck not? <laughs> so let's go ahead and draw from our bag, and what do we get? We get a zero. Awesome, we just collected both clues. That's awesome, I love that. Now that winging it card, doesn't go into our discard pile like I threw it. That needs to go into our deck. I'll go ahead and shuffle that. Joe is going to go next, and he's going to go ahead and spend the first action, spending one times the amount of investigators, two clues, draw the top card of the leads deck. So we'll go ahead and do that. We're going to draw the Tome of Rituals. Uh, it just says the same thing. Put it into your play area. I don't know what it's going to do. A massive book, its pages ancient and weathered. As you page through, a leaflet falls out. Picking it up, you see it contains a simple message. The Enclave awaits below. Now that we've done this, we have, we have control of two lead assets. So let's go ahead and flip our act deck. It isn't much, but it's all you've got. Your only real option now is to explore the rest of the hotel and see what you can learn. Put each of the set-aside locations into play. Remove the remainder of the leads deck from the game. Depending on which lead assets are in play, shuffle six cards into the encounter deck as followed, along with the encounter discard pile. If the alien device, no. Manager's key, no. Tome of Ritual, yes. Shuffle the three set-aside copies of the Cultus of the Enclave into the encounter deck. Sinister Solution, yes. Uh, shuffle the three set-aside copies of Morbid Awareness into the encounter deck. So those are the two that we're going to shuffle into the encounter deck. Wow, that's super cool. So each time you play, it can be different. Thanks to the leads you discovered in the suite, you're fairly sure whoever framed you is still in the hotel. The only real question is where to find the person. Looking at the leads you found, you feel like the answers are right in front of you. Objective. Learn more about your leads by placing clues on them using abilities on some locations. The more clues, the better. 
At the end of the round, you may choose to advance if each lead asset has at least two clues on it. Hint, if you wish to present this evidence to the police, you may wish to have at least four clues on each lead asset instead. Huh. So you can almost see the entire hotel. <laughs> we have the foyer here, the office here, that restaurant like before. Now we have the basement down here. We have the second floor here, and then way up here, which you can't see, is the hotel roof. And then over here we have room 212 and room 245. Both of those are only connected to the hallway. So that's why I put them on this side. They have to go through the hallway. Just like this room, you have to go to the hallway. This room though is connected to the sweet balcony, which is where Patrice is. So it sounds like we need to find ways to get clues onto these specific asset cards. I have no idea how. We're going to have to do that through the locations, I believe. So Joe has two more actions. Before deciding that, I do think we are going to spend the three resources that we have. So this is going to spend all of our resources to put out Randolph Carter. First of all, he's an awesome soak. Second of all, he gives us three willpower and five for our intelligence. I will take that. And then you know what? I feel like the basement. Great place to go, right? There's got to be something there. The hum of machinery and the dim lighting makes your hair stand on end. Exploring the basement will be difficult. Amidst the din, you think you hear footsteps echoing your own. Just a few paces behind. Oh, someone's following us. We have test your intellect one, which should be pretty easy for Joe. If you succeed, move a humanoid enemy at any location once towards the basement. Hmm. After you defeat an enemy in the basement, move any number of clues controlled by investigators at the basement to the Tome of Rituals. I have the Tome of Rituals. That is awesome. Okay. So that's a way for me to get clues onto the Tome of Rituals. I need to actually pull enemies to this location and kill them. But I also, of course, need to actually control clues. And right now, no one has any clues. <laughs> but I've done my three actions. That'll be it. I will flip him over. Let's go ahead and move to upkeep. I should say, before we move to upkeep, we do have to do the enemy activation. And you know what? There's a conspicuous staff one space away from Patrice. Should have thought of that. And he, they are hunters. So they're going to go ahead and normally they would uh, pray for the character that has the most clues. But Patrice and Joe both have no clues. And so they're going to come to Patrice. They're going to engage her and deal her one physical damage and one mental damage. The nice thing is, is we have Sylvester here. So I'll put that there. But at the end of the round, yeah, at the end of your turn. So I guess that'll be next round. We can heal that from him. And then Patrice will take one physical damage. Our hotel guest here is a patrol, and they're trying to go to the nearest crime location, so they will just move themselves to room 225. Now that I've actually taken care of the enemy phase, let's move to the upkeep phase. So we'll reset everything, then we'll ready all of our exhausted cards. Each investigator will draw cards, but we will have Patrice discard all three of these, and she'll draw a set of five new cards. One, two, three, four, five. And let's see, what do we got? Oh, we've got Say Your Prayers twice. Uh, and we've got lots of things that could help us when it's in our discard pile. Fearless, that can help us heal a horror, which actually is not terrible. We'll also generate one resource. Joe over here will gain one card, and he gains Inquiring Minds. Oh, that's great! That can help him gain those clues in his location. And then we'll just have to take that um, scene of the crime, shuffle it back in to his deck of hunch cards. We'll move to that Mythos phase and gain our second Doom. And then we need to draw our encounter cards, starting with Patrice. She gets Violent Outburst. If there are no humanoid enemies in play, we do have one. Search the encounter deck and discard pile three might draw it and shuffle the encounter. Otherwise, the nearest humanoid enemy readies, moves one location at a time until it reaches their location, engages you, and makes an immediate attack. So I'm feeling like the one that's already engaged with her would attack again. That is brutal. That means Patrice is going to take another sanity damage and another physical damage. The physical damage I'm not worried about, but we are one away from losing St. Hubert's Key. So the advantage with having St. Hubert's Key is if we ever would be defeated by uh, sanity, we would uh, discard this and immediately heal two horror. So that's nice at least, but we spent four for this and this is supposed to help us. <laughs> so that would be a real bummer. Let's go ahead and draw for Joe. Joe gets the Cultist of the Enclave, spawn in the basement, which is where we are, uh, Hunter, and Forced. After the Cultist of the Enclave attacks, reveal a random token from the Chaos Bag. If it's any of those uh, symbols is revealed, place one Doom on the current agenda. Ugh. And since this is in the basement, this will automatically engage Joe. 
let's go ahead and move into the investigation phase. First thing we get to do is reveal the top card of the hunch deck for Joe, and he gets evidence. Uh, fast play after you defeat an enemy to discover a clue at your location. Oh, that's kind of tempting. But no, I'm going to do what I'm thinking before. I'm going to try and evade the cultist. Because if I evade the cultist and then collect the two clues that are in our location, then what we get to do is next round when we defeat this cultist, we then could put those two clues onto the Tome of Rituals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend Inquiring Minds and Shortcut seems terrible but that's going to give me one two three four four to our agility which is two so uh four plus the two is six six to three let's reveal a token from our chaos bag and we get a skull what's skull that is x x is the number of guest enemies in play we have one guest in play so that's minus one boom we just succeeded we will exhaust this uh enemy and then we'll put him in the basement Great. Now that means we can do some cluing for action two and three. Well, this is going to be tight. We have a total shroud value of four, and our intellect is four from our base card, plus uh, Randolph gives us five. So we can get the zeros, the minus ones, the plus one, or the success to do this. If we get anything else, it's a failure. And our first one is a zero. Boom. First clue. Gained it. All right, second one. So this is action three. We'll go ahead and draw. Oh, we got that. That is a minus three, I believe. Yes, if you fail and there is an innocent enemy in the victory display. No, there isn't. Take one horror. We don't have to worry about that. But what we can do after that symbol is revealed during a skill test at your location, we'll exhaust him and we get to draw two cards. So if nothing else, we get to draw two cards for it. And we get a Vicious Blow, but then we get our Psychosis. Add Psychosis to your threat area. After you take one or more Horror, take one Direct Damage. Oh, I'm going to spend two actions to get rid of that. Gross! For Patrice's turn, she's running out of options. She can use her Bloodstained Dagger, and I think she's going to have to. Exhaust Bloodstained Dagger and take one Horror. She's going to take the second Horror, and Peter is going to be killed. That's not what I wanted to do, but I honestly don't know <laughs> what else I'm going to do. But we're going to do that. That's going to give us plus two to our combat and deal plus one damage. So we're going to be able to deal two damage here, which will kill the conspicuous staff. But we're only at a four compared to the three here. So I'm going to draw from this, and we're going to see how we do. We get a plus one. <laughs> get out of here, conspicuous staff. We just killed you. Great. So that was her first action. Her second action is she's going to move over to room 225. And then her third action is she's actually going to do something on this card. We're going to go ahead and test our willpower of three. If you succeed, remember that the investigator cleaned up the blood. We need three or higher to succeed. One for four. If we succeed, we'll hear one horror. Uh, so that's four plus another four is eight plus another four is 12. Might as well use them all because <laughs> I'm going to discard my hand anyways. That means the fail, the auto fail is the only reason we would not succeed. Oh, minus three. Great. We are still fine. That means we need to remember we at least cleaned up the blood. But that was our third action and we get to heal one horror. Thank goodness. We only have five instead of six. That was not the most successful round, but you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> what we're going to do is this hotel guest during the enemy phase will stay where it is because it's at the closest crime scene location. This cultist of the enclave will just ready and then automatically engage Joe again. Bring it. But that happens at the end of the enemy phase, so she won't attack Joe until next round. We'll then move to the upkeep phase. We'll ready everything for both Joe and for Patrice. Joe will draw one card. He gets Milan, which is awesome. But of course, he only has one resource right now. Patrice will discard her hand of two cards. And she will draw herself five new ones. One, two, three, four, five. And what does she get? She gets, of course, her Watcher of Another Dimension. I was kind of expecting that. But some Last Chance, another Winging It, some Defiance, and some Perception, which will be nice to be able to help us do some cluing. Moving to the Mythos phase, we'll simply place the third one here, which makes us flip our agenda deck. As you retrace the steps to make sense of the situation, there's a pounding on the door to the suite. Uh, 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 uh. This is the police. 
a stern voice calls out. We've gotten reports of a disturbance. Open up. Put the set-aside Sergeant Monroe into play in the foyer. Spawn one set-aside Arkham officer enemy at the second floor hall. If there's three or four, I can ignore that part. Then shuffle each other set-aside Arkham officer enemy into the encounter deck along with the encounter discard pile. The lead investigator draws the set-aside what have you draw um, oh draws the set-aside what have you done weakness. For each of the following circumstances, which is true, place one clue on room 225 from the token blank and place one doom on an Arkham officer. The investigators have not cleaned up the blood. Oh, gosh, we just did that. Oh, man, but the other two. We didn't hide the body or tidy up the room. <laughs> You're not the only ones interested in the strange events in the Excelsior tonight, and the police are on to you. You're still not sure what happened or if it could happen again. Forced, after an investigator at the same location as a ready police enemy discovers one or more clues at that location or deals damage to a humanoid enemy, each ready police enemy at that location engages that investigator and makes an immediate attack. Oof. Well, it's a darn good thing I found all the clues I needed in the foyer. <laughs> Just so you can see, we still have our hotel guest here at 225. Of course, we didn't take care of the uh, body or cleaning up our mess. So we have four clues here now instead of two. And two Arkham or two Doom on the Arkham officer here at the second floor hall. And then here we have Sergeant Monroe as well. Finally, let's draw our encounter cards, starting with Patrice. She gets the Morbid Awareness. Test Willpower 6. Holy moly. Reduce the difficulty of this test by 1 for each location away from 212 you are. Oh, room 212. We're going to have to get in there then. So we've got room 212. Then we go to second floor for 1. And then room 225, that's 2. So we're doing a Willpower test of 4. And then this says, uh, if you fail, you must either place one of your clues at your location or take two horror. Well, we don't have any clues. Two horror would be terrible. So this is a four, uh, a four willpower test. Our willpower is five. Hmm, let me see if I can do anything here. Let's go ahead and use defiance here. And then we are going to make the, uh, the little squiggly guy be worth zero. So nothing. So we've got a total of six to four. Yeah, yeah, six to four. And let's see what we get. We get a minus two. Oh my gosh, that's a four to four. We're good. Huh. Our next card is for Joe. Joe will get blood on your hands. Test your willpower two. Increase the difficulty of this test by one for each innocent enemy in the victory display. We don't have anything in the victory display. So we just need to do willpower of two. Our willpower is a whopping three. <laughs> so let's see. Yeah, you know, I think... Let's go ahead and use Steadfast for this. So we're going to gain a total of 1, 2, 3 to our willpower. So our willpower is normally 3 because of Randolph. Now it is 4, 5, 6. 6, 2, 2. 6 to 2, drawing from our, uh, from our bag. Minus 1, we're good to go. First thing we need to do at the beginning of our investigation phase is to go ahead and shuffle up our hunch deck and we'll reveal our top card for uh this is for joe and we have working on a hunch fast play only on your turn discover one clue at your location that is actually amazing this is fast this doesn't take an action so it will not provoke an attack from the cultist that's on us let's definitely do that we're gonna have him go first then oh i forgot to flip them over so he's gonna go ahead and use this this is from his hench hunch deck so normally it would cost two to use this uh, it costs nothing, and we're going to obtain this clue. We now have two clues, and what's great is now we can attack this cultist, and if we kill this cultist, we can place both of those clues on the Tomb of Rituals. And I think it makes sense. What we're going to do is use our fight here. We're going to get plus one for our attack, so our attack has a total of five compared to the three. We're not going to use the additional ability to use charges. Instead, we're going to use Vicious Blow. So that'll give us six to the three. And then if we are successful, we'll deal plus one damage. So we can take this cultist out. Six to three, six to three. And we get this, which is a minus three, which is perfect. Minus three still works. We are still at three to three. We'll defeat the cultist of the Enclave. We also get to exhaust Randolph. And we get to draw two more cards. That's kind of awesome. Uh, let's see what we get. And we get Eureka and Deduction. That's wonderful. And then, because we just did that, and we're in the basement here, it says, after you defeat an enemy in the basement, move any number of clues controlled by investigators at the basement to the Tome of Rituals. 
So I have just placed both of those onto the Tome of Rituals. Oh, that's two on there. Great. I think our other two actions will just simply be to get rid of this psychosis. It's a pain, but I don't want to deal with it. So we've just discarded that and we've done our turn. I just want to call out you guys and I should also will be making notations so you'll see this. But I totally missed the forest at the end of this enemy phase. If the hotel cast is at a cr crime scene, I think that would have pushed the uh, agenda forward one more space. So what I'm going to do to rectify that is I'm going to put two doom on our hotel guest because I'm pretty sure two rounds during the end of the enemy phase that hotel guest has been at a crime scene. So I need to get need to take care of this first thing stat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to parlay and I'm going to go ahead and test my hmm. Well, yeah, I'm going to test my willpower because my willpower is five, five to the three. And I don't have anything in my hand to add to that. So let's just go ahead and do it. We're going to try and talk to that hotel guest. Shh, shh. What are you talking about? There's not a dead body here. What, what are you saying? Okay, cultist says minus one. Well, I'll show this to you. Minus one. If there's an innocent enemy in the victory display, there's not. So minus one. Shh, be quiet. <laughs> okay, okay. That means if you succeed, we can discard her and that will get rid of that doom. Okay, that was, that was good. So that was our first action. Our second action, we're actually going to move out into the second floor hall. Now, the first thing we want to look at is this Arkham officer is aloof. And so that means that we don't have to worry about him automatically engaging us. Second of all, we can read this card. It says extravagant carpeting runs along the floor and meticulously clean walls are peripherated by blood red doors. Ooh, blood red, really? This location has two clues on it. After you enter this location, you may immediately move to a connecting location. If you do reveal a random token from the chaos bag, if it's any of these symbols, draw the top card of the encounter deck. Nah, I'm not going to do that because what I want to do in this location is I actually want to parlay with this officer. We need to test our willpower of three, but our willpower is five. If you succeed, either automatically evade the Arkham officer or flip one of its doom to its clue side and take control of it. And that's what I want to do because I don't need to evade him yet. He's not, he's aloof. So he's not engaged with us. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to play last chance. We can only commit this card with no other cards. And then it loses minus one of its wild symbols for each card in our hand. We unfortunately have three cards in hand. So it's just considered two, but that means we're a seven to a three, seven to a three. We can do this. We'll draw, that's a minus three. So seven, six, five, four, that's still okay. So we can flip one of these to the clue side and gain it from how I understand and take control of it. So we just collected one clue and we made him not as doomful, so to speak. Unfortunately though, he's gonna keep moving clues from his location and flipping them into doom, but we can always parlay with him to get them back. So we're very good at talking to this officer. We must have some sort of connection with him or he kind of likes our violin. <laughs> During that enemy phase, all that's going to happen is this Arkham officer is actually going to move to the location which has the most clues, which is room 225. Then he's going to take one of these clues and turn it into Doom. So we already have two Doom on the agenda. We'll then move to the upkeep phase. Patrice will gain three resources. Joe will go from one to two resources. Patrice will discard these two cards in hand. She still has a watcher in her hand. One, two, three. Oh, yes, four, <laughs> five. I really wanted to see these because I want to sneak into that room 212. Beautiful. Joe, of course, will get to draw just a single card. Bang the fine glass. That's amazing. Fast, wonderful. We'll move to that mythos phase. Place one doom on the special investigation. But remember, we have two on the Arkham officer. That's, so that's a total of three. Let's go ahead and draw our encounter cards. So our first one is for Patrice. She gets incriminating evidence. Oh, great. Attached to the nearest non-crime scene location. Attached location gains the crime scene trait and gets plus two shroud. When you successfully investigate the attached location, instead of discovering clues, discard this instead. Oh, so that's going to be in her spot because the hallway is currently not a crime scene. Now it is. Our second card will be for Joe, and he gets Noxious Fumes. In player order, each investigator at your location must choose. Test your Agility 3 to attempt to flee before the gas fills the room. If you succeed, move to a connecting location. If you fail, take 2 damage. Ugh. Or we can test our Might to attempt to hold your breath. For each point you fail by, take 1 damage. Mm, okay, well our Might or Combat is, what, a 4. Our Agility is only 2. <laughs> 
I think with what we have, let's just go ahead and test our might. Our might is four compared to the three here. We draw a minus three, so we failed by two. That means we take two points of damage. That's his first two. He now has six health instead of eight. Well, you guys, I have another faux pas that I made. I should have had this out in play for Patrice when she did her parlay action. She should have had this what have you done. And this states that as an additional cost for you to parlay, you must discard a card at random from your hand. Totally didn't do that, so I'm just going to take it from this hand and randomly discard a card from this hand, which stinks because I don't want to do that, but I will. Okay, I'm going to discard Fearless. That would have healed Horror. That's a bummer. But that way, at least, I'm caught up from the last round. I am very sorry that I missed that. We're going to go ahead and start off with Patrice. For her first action, she's going to try and sneak into this room 212. I'm pretty sure that's where we need to go for our Sinister Solution because if you remember, we had that encounter card. Let me see. Here it is. This Morbid Awareness. This one specifically was from the Sinister Solution and it's all about your distance away from 212. So my guess is there's something fishy going on there. Now, in order for us to move there, we have to test our Agility 4 to attempt to pick the lock. If we do, we can immediately move to it. Our Agility is 2, but thanks to manual dexterity and that makes us four and then run for your life and that makes us eight eight to a four let's go ahead and reveal a token from our chaos bag and we get a zero easy so that should get us in now we are talking look at this test your intelligence three if you succeed movie move any number of uh, clues controlled by investigators at this location to the sinister solution if it's in play. Boom. A mass of inhuman matter sits in a glass tube on the desk, connected to all manner of strange and futuristic lab equipment. The bed nearby looks like it was never slept in. Sitting on the mattress is a case of vials, each filled with green, vicious liquid. That's totally what we drank. It is not our fault we did not kill that guy. I now believe Patrice is innocent. <laughs> Let's see if that's true. Uh, we can get a victory one here. So I'm totally going to try and get all of these. It is a four shroud location though. So that's going to be brutal. So we've done one action to pick the lock. And that actually allows us to immediately move there. So do we, let's see, what do we have in our hand? I do think for action two, we're going to play our violin just because that is going to help us to gain resources if nothing else. So that means we have used two out of the three of our resources so we have one left. Unfortunately, the only card we have left in our hand is this Watcher. Oh wait, we totally succeeded with using Manual Dexterity. So I'm going to go ahead and draw one card. And we have Last Chance. Oh, this would be awesome. This could add one, two, three, four total uh, skill cards. So this could be four, two in our investigation. Because we do still have this one stupid Watcher in our hand. But that can help us with our investigation for Action 3. So let's go ahead and use Winging It from our discard pile. We'll spend the one resource. That's going to give minus one shroud to this location. So that's only a three. And then if we play this from our discard pile, we actually gain two clues instead of one. This is awesome. And then we're going to add a total of four to our investigation. Our investigation is three. Three plus four is seven. Seven to a three. Come on. Seven to a three. That should be good. Uh, seven, six, five. Perfect. That is two clues for us. That will mean, though, we will have to flip ourselves over like so. Now it's Joe's turn, and this is where I wish we had not used our shortcut. Oh, man, if we could have moved, it is what it is. I think I'm just going to move one, and then two, and then three. I think that's all we're going to do. Uh, it means we're going to be placing more doom on the Arkham Officer, but I think that's worth it, because if we can get these clues, and then we can get all of our clues onto the Sinister Solution... I might be able to jump us to the next act card and then, well, yeah, and then maybe we have to go and attack the Arkham Officer or something to get rid of all of that doom. But I don't want to kill people if I don't have to. Any cards that have Victory Zero freak me out. <laughs> victory Zero usually means you don't want them in the Victory Display. And we definitely want this because that will get us another XP. So that means we'll have two XP. So let's go ahead and move to the enemy phase. During the enemy phase, this clue will turn into Doom. Then let's go ahead and move to the upkeep phase. I'll go ahead and generate one resource for each of them. That means Patrice has one and Joe will have three. Almost ready to put out his second ally. <laughs> then we'll have Patrice just draw four cards. One, two, three, four. Because she has her Watcher in her hand. Oh, six cents. Nice Reckless Assault. Manual Dexterity. Oh, I might need to use this to kill that Watcher in her hand. Oh, and Cornered is amazing. Finally, our upgraded card. 
Joe will just draw one card, and he gets take the initiative. Oh, that's that's actually super nice because we can use that if we use that at the beginning of the round. During that mythos phase, we will place our fifth doom already because there are three on the arcane officer. We'll reveal a card for Patrice, and she gains Mr. Trombley. Spawn in the foyer, hunter. Uh, forced, after Mr. Trombley enters play, immediately resolve the hunter and patrol keyword on each staff enemy in play. Oh, good thing we threw that staff out. or we killed him, so we don't have to worry about that. But he will be out there with Sergeant Monroe. And then we have Joe's card. We have Spawn in the basement. Oh yeah, we've already seen one of these guys. So we'll put him in the basement. Also a hunter. To start our next investigation phase, I'm going to start by revealing a hunch card. Pretty sure I didn't last round. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reveal two because I do have a weakness in here. So this is for last round. Okay, I didn't get the weakness. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. It's a lot to control and I'm getting interrupted a lot. So it's kind of causing me to make these silly mistakes. So I apologize. Uh, I will keep making notes. I'm still having fun. I hope you guys are too. Uh, we will have, oh, working a hunch. Okay, fast play. During your turn, discover one clue at your location. Oh, uh, yeah. Wow, does this come up at the right time. So we'll have him start first, and he'll just use this for a fast action. That's going to allow him to claim this clue that's there. That means then for our first action, what we will do is we'll use take the initiative. We can commit this to a skill test that we are performing. It loses uh, any question marks for each action that's already been taken. Well, we haven't taken any actions this round, so we have all three. So three of that plus our four plus one because of Randolph, so five, five, six, seven, eight, eight to a four. Let's go ahead and see if we can get that last clue. We will draw from here and we get a minus two. That's six to a four. Perfect, we'll gain that last clue. Then what we can do is we can test our intelligence. If you succeed, move any number of clues controlled by investigators at this location to the sinister solution. And we have a total of five clues, you guys. I am definitely going to do that. Right now, it's a five to a three. Let's go ahead and make it a six to a three. And if we succeed, then what we get to do is uh, draw the top three cards of our deck. And we get to look at one. And oh, we got a star. <laughs> you know what that means? That means we get plus one, so we succeed, and we can move an insight that's on in our discard pile. And I'm definitely going to grab a shortcut, and we're going to shuffle that into our insight deck. That means we're going to grab one, two, three, four, five clues, plop them there. And then because of this, we get to draw the top three cards of our deck, choose one to put into our hand. Ooh, we got another Eureka, but I like the unexpected courage. Let's put that into our hand, and we'll shuffle our deck. For our final action, let's go ahead and flip our resources up to four. That way, next round, we can put out Dr. Milan. We'll have another in intellect then and get some resource generation. But with that, since we still have one more hand slot open, let's go ahead and spend one to put out the magnifying glass. So at least while we're investigating going forward, we have plus one intellect. For Carolyn here, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to discard the sixth sense to generate a resource. That's what we're using with our uh, violin. So that's a free action. And that means for our first action, we can go ahead and put down cornered, which is awesome. That's going to help us with our skill tests. For action two, then, we're going to try and attack the watcher from another dimension that's in our hand. So our fight is two. Reckless assault, that makes us six. And then we're going to discard manual dexterity with the cornered ability to make us eight. So it's eight, and we have to beat a five. Okay, come on. Come on, so far, this uh, chaos bag has been okay for me. <laughs> Actually, it's been quite good. I can't complain. And we get a minus one, no problem. The Watcher is gone. We can discard it. And then for our final action, I'm going to go ahead and also generate a resource. Now, I could, you guys, try and get rid of this. What have you done? But the thing is, is it gets shuffled back into our deck. That's, that's absolutely terrible for her because that just means she's going to draw it again and again and again. So... Yeah, I'm just leaving it out. <laughs> we'll go ahead and move to that enemy phase. Our hunters are going to move. This one is, yeah, connected to this room. The cultists can come up to here. Uh, the Arkham officer is still in the location with the most clues, two being the most that there is. Then at the end of the round, he's going to steal one of them. One, two, three, four. We have a total of six doom out. Oof. That will be the end of the enemy phase. We'll then do our upkeep phase, flip our cards over, 
we'll have Joe draw one card, and he gets Inquiring Minds. And then Patrice will draw five. One, two, three, four, five. I love drawing five cards each round. <laughs> and we don't have any weaknesses, thank goodness. Another improvised weapon, some perception. Each of them will generate a resource. That means Joe will have four, and Patrice will have two. Now, at the end of the round, you may choose to advance if each lead asset has at least two clues on it. Well, our Sinister Solution has one, two, three, four, five clues on it. We've got so much info on that one. And then the, the Tome of Rituals has two. I'm going to take it. I think that's good. So let's go ahead and resolve this. We'll flip this over, and we have The Truth. Read Scenario Interlude The Truth on page 10 of the rule booklet. Your investigation is halted by Sergeant Monroe, the very same police sergeant who had spurned your earlier warnings about the Excelsior Hotel. He is clearly exasperated by all the strange happenings in the building and demands answers. Now, listen here, he says, his hand twitching towards the holstered gun. I'm a reasonable man, but you're looking mighty suspicious. You better tell me everything that's going on right now, you understand, or you're gonna take a one-way trip to the big house. So we can choose either tell Sergeant Monroe the truth or lie about our involvement. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking that we should tell the truth, because if we lie, <laughs> we're probably terrible liars knowing us. Uh, I know I am. So let's go to truth two. You explain everything to Sergeant Monroe from the beginning. The rumors, the note, the murder. The more you explain, the more you realize how crazy it all sounds. But you know it is the truth. You know you're innocent, but do you have the evidence to back it up? Maybe? Sergeant Monroe will only believe you if you've collected enough evidence and did not try to cover up your involvement. If all the following circumstances are true, skip to truth 5, otherwise go to truth 4. So let's see. The investigators have not cleaned up the blood. Ah, uh, yes, I did that. Uh, <laughs> so I already failed, just from that. And I don't even have two clues per on the lead assets. I only have two on the Tome of Rituals. I should have thought of that. Oh my gosh, so I totally failed at that. He's not going to believe us. So we are going to skip to truth four. No, no, I don't believe you, the man says, unholstering his weapon. None of this checks out. You're coming with me, pal. You can sing your story down at the station. You raise your hands and he starts ushering you out of the room where there is a tremendous crash from another part of the hotel. The entire building shakes to its foundation and you hear the guests screaming. What in the world? He looks to the door, then to you. Stay put, he warns, or I swear next time I see you, you're getting cuffed. He runs off to investigate the noise, mumbling about how he's getting too old for this job. Remember that the police don't believe you. Ah, great. Remove Sergeant Monroe from the game, search the encounter deck and discard pile in all play areas for each copy of the Arkham Officer, and remove them from the game. Oh, great. That'll get rid of the four doom that's out there. Uh, shovel the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck and skip to truth seven. Thanks to your cunning investigation, you now have a better idea of what is going on. You're not the real culprit here. There is much more happening behind the scenes of the Excelsior Hotel, and you're just caught in the middle. I hate that. Resolve the text below based on which two lead assets you control are controlled by the players. If the Sinister Solution and the Tome of Rituals are in play, the Enclave have wrested control of an inhuman brain through a vile ritual and blood sacrifice. Now the cult utilizes the brain's vast intellect and strange secretions to possess others to do their bidding, like us, and you are their latest victim. The only way to stop their scheme is to break their hold over this brain once and for all. Remove all doom from play, advance the act and agenda deck to the set aside the true culprit on uh, 9. It is both the current act and the current agenda. Move all clues from the sinister solution to the Tome of Rituals. Uh, so that means the Tome of Rituals has a total of uh, 7 clues on it. Cool. Attach the set aside harvest brain to room 212. Here we have our final act and agenda card. And it says, room 212 gains spend in action. If the Tome of Rituals is at this location, test your willpower 5 or intellect 5. If you succeed, move two clues from the Tome of Ritual to the Harvested Brain. If Harvested Brain has three, uh, so six clues on it, advance. So we need to be able to do this three times. Here we have the Harvested Brain. It says, at the end of the investigation phase, each investigator at the attached lo location takes one damage and one horror. Each other investigator must either take one damage or one horror, their choice. Wow, so this is just going to hammer us from afar, even if we're not at that location. 
And the best part is we're not even done. We did this at the end of our turn. So now to start the next round, we have to place one doom. If we get six on here, we have to, well, I'm assuming lose the game because <laughs> uh, this is our last one. Then we have to draw Mythos cards. This first one is for um, Patrice. And it's test your willpower to increase the difficulty of this test by one for each innocent enemy. We don't have any. So our willpower is five right now. Five to a two. I'll take my chances. Let's go ahead and draw from the bag. And we get a minus two. That's great. We passed that one. No problem. And then this one is for Joe. Joe's going to get a hotel desk or a hotel guest. Spawn at the nearest hall location, so that's adjacent to us. And of course it does the patrol, and it's just going to try and push Doom out on the board. We'll go ahead and move to that investigation phase. This is Joe's hunch deck. We'll give it a good shuffle, and we'll reveal this one. And we have that we can, uh, no stone left unturned, so we can draw the top six cards and choose one to keep in our hand. I'm not going to use that. Let's see, I think we're going to start with Patrice this round, because... We could potentially end the game right here if we wanted. Uh, remember, this brain is here at 212. That's right where we're sitting. <laughs> so all we need to do is test our willpower. And our willpower is 5 already. So let's see what we can do. Let's go ahead and give this a shot. So we'll discard our improvised weapon. We're going to test our willpower. So that I'm discarding with our cornered. That's going to give us a plus 2 for this skill test. So we're at a 4. Plus 1 is a 5 plus the two that we just did, that's seven. Seven to the five, I might play, no, I'm gonna play this one. I'm gonna play St. Hubert's Key here. Eight to five, that feels pretty good. Let's go ahead and draw from our bag, and we get a plus one, wow. Okay, so that means two clues are on the harvested brain. We only need to do that two more times. Let's go ahead and try it again. This time, let's do our intellect. So we're going to use Cornered again. We're going to discard the Mist of Raleigh. That will make our intellect be four. Then we'll do this for two. That's five, six, plus this is seven. So that's all the cards in my hand, but seven to a five. That's a little tight. Let's see what we get. We get a minus one. Wow, that will definitely work. That's two more clues there. Now, we have one more action, but I don't think we're going to have a chance. Oh, wait. First, we get to draw a card thanks to uh, using the Perception, and we'll draw another Deny Existence. Oh, do we take the chance? I don't know if I really want to finish the game yet, though, because right now my victory points is only two, and that means that I did not gain or at least stay the same for the amount of victory points from this scenario to the last. I'd like to take out, if I can, <laughs> I'm getting greedy. I'd like to take out Mr. Trombley here. He'd give me uh, one victory. I think Joe could maybe do that. So I think, I think I'm just going to, yeah, I'm just going to generate a resource to end this round for, uh, for Patrice. I'm realizing I do have this one dead card in my hand. Might as well generate a resource with that. So I will discard a card. Oh, what can I do? Ch to either gain one resource or draw a card, I can actually choose Joe. So I'm going to choose Joe for that because it does say choose an investigator at your location. So Joe will draw a card and he gets another enchanted blade. Not really helpful. Joe then is going to go ahead and spend his first action to move into this location with Mr. Trombley. That means Mr. Trombley will automatically engage him as an enemy. And then we're going to do our best to try and kill him here. <laughs> we have two actions left. So we can use our enchanted blade, and I am going to use one of our charges. So that's going to give us, you get plus one for this attack. As an additional cost to initiate, uh, activate this ability, you may spend one charge to empower the blade. If you do, I get plus one. So I actually am going to get plus two to my strength and plus one damage. So my strength is normally four, plus one is five, plus one is six. And then I'm going to play this for seven. And that will also give us plus one damage. So this will deal a total of three damage for this attack. It's seven to a four. I feel pretty good about those odds. Let's see. We draw a minus one. Perfect. That'll deal three damage to him. And it's three damage to him because of Vicious Blow giving plus one damage. The Enchanted Blade giving us plus one damage. And then our regular damage for doing that action. Then we're going to do another attack. We're going to use the... Uh, same thing we are going to use this ability use up charge that'll get us to do the two damage that we need to be able to kill him because he has five health 
Then I'm going to go ahead and throw down an unexpected. No, I'm going to keep the unexpected courage. There are clues at this location. So let's go ahead and use the inquiring mind. So that would give us four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, nine. Nine to his four. <laughs> He's not going to know what just hit him. And we draw another minus one. This bag is wonderful. He is toast, and that'll give us a victory point. Now that is our third action. We now are at the end of the investigation phase, so I think I'll go ahead and deal one uh, sanity damage to Randolph Carter because we are not in the same location as that brain, but every other investigator had to take at least one damage or one sanity. So we'll take the one sanity. Unfortunately, though, Patrice is going to have to take both. Taking the one damage, we can handle. Taking the one sanity, two, four, six, we can still handle just barely. We are one away. <laughs> Moving to that enemy phase, the first thing that's going to happen is this hotel guest will gain one doom because it is now at a crime scene location because there's some evidence here. Don't know if you remember that. Then this cultist of the enclave, golly, I forgot about this gal. She's going to move into our location and engage Joe. She's then going to deal one physical damage to Joe. And then let's reveal a token from the chaos bag. And let's see what it is. It is a minus one because apparently that's all we draw from the bag, which is great. So this ability doesn't happen or we have to place additional doom. But this means Joe has three physical damage. We'll move to that upkeep phase. I have flipped us over. Let's go ahead and draw cards. Joe gains his Detective Colt's 1911s. Oh man, those are awesome. And then Patrice is going to draw five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Her deck is getting very low. Oh, she gets a Ward of Protection. Great. She can uh, uh, kill herself with sanity <laughs> and cancel a treachery card. We'll each generate a resource. So Joe has five and Patrice has four. We'll then move to that Mythos phase, drop another Doom on the true culprit. That means there's three out. We're already halfway done. We'll draw our first Mythos card for Patrice, and she gets the incriminating evidence again. That will be placed, the closest one I think is the foyer actually. So the foyer now is going to be considered a crime scene. Oh man, everywhere is a crime scene. And then the card for Joe is another cultist. <laughs> These cultists are everywhere. At least it spawns in the basement, so we're probably not going to have to deal with it. To start the investigation phase, we'll start with our hunch deck. We will shuffle this up and we get another no stone left unturned. We will start with Joe. I think the first thing he's going to do is try and blow this cultist out of the sky. Then he can just move here and finish the game, I think. We'll use our final charge on the enchanted blade. That means we are at plus two for our strength. Four plus two is six. I'll discard this enchanted blade to make it seven. And yeah, let's do it. We'll discard the Detective Colts uh, also for eight. It is now eight to three. We better win this. Eight to three, eight to three, and we get a skull. Oh, let me see. What is that? Skull is the number of guest enemies in play. We have one. So uh, seven to three. Yeah, gone. Did two points of damage. No problem. Action two. We'll run ourselves back into room 212 from here. And then action three, let's see if we can do this. Uh, I think we're going to do the investigation instead of the willpower. Our total investigation is four plus one from Randolph, which is five. That's five to five. Then we'll add all of this from our hand. So that's six, seven, eight, nine. That empties out our hand. Nine to five. Nine to five. Let's see what we get. And we get a minus one. Boom. That will place two more onto that brain. That is a total of six clues. Let's advance the agenda. You stand in the lobby of the hotel, the building suddenly silent and seemingly empty. You hold the bottle of the strange liquid up to the light and consider its contents again. Your eye twitches as it traces the swirling, churning green solution within, and you shudder as you wonder what other effects this concoction may hold. You slide the bottle into your pocket, finding some measure of comfort in knowing that the strange goings-on at the Excelsior have been put to rest, at least for now. Nobody will ever believe what you witnessed in the Excelsior. Not three days later, the hotel was open again, like nothing had ever happened. You know better, though. You witnessed it all firsthand. The events continue to haunt your dreams and your waking thoughts. Even now, you go out of your way to avoid the Excelsior, though weeks have passed and there have been no sign of any other nefarious schemes within its accursed walls. The only thing that can quiet the echoing memories of that horrible experience is a visit to the local speakeasy. 
But all the booze in the world can't keep the grisly visions from your nightmares waking you in the dead of night with a violent start soaking in sweat. That's when you notice the person asking around town about the Excelsior. Innocent questions at first, but more prodding with each passing day. Surely they will believe you. Somebody has to. You may have broken free of the Excelsior's grasp, but there will be other victims. Of that, you are sure. You grab a piece of paper and hastily scribble a note. It's all a facade. Room 225. Tonight. It's not over. If they can see past the veil of the Excelsior's operations, then maybe others can too. It may not be too late to stop it from all happening again. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, that's awesome. In our campaign log, record the Excelsior's quiet for now. The lead investigator must add the what-have-you-done weakness to their deck. They may also choose to add the bloodstained dagger story asset to their deck as well. Yeah, we're going to take both. I don't know why I wouldn't take that asset. That's a pretty good, I mean, that plus two fight, I'll take it. Both cards do not count towards the investigator's deck size. If the police are on your side, no, they're not. Uh, If the police don't believe you, do not add Sergeant Monroe to any investigator's deck. Additionally, if there's at least one police enemy in the victory display, no, there is not, thank goodness, search the collection for a detective or madness weakness and add it to the lead investigator's deck. Oh, man, that would have been terrible. Each investigator earns experience equal to the victory X value of each card in the victory display. Yep, here we are. One, two, three total victory points. So we essentially washed on the scenario. I'm okay with that. I really do like this uh, story asset. I think this will be cool. It's super cheap for Patrice to play, which is nice, giving her plus two fight if she needs it. This does kind of stink, but I have no idea how much parlay we're going to need to do on the Dream Eaters uh, campaign. But regardless, that was a blast. (laughs) I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for joining me on this side quest. I now have three experience for Joe and four for Patrice, but I also have her two free spell um, uh, spell upgrades as well. So let me know what you think for upgrades, and then let me know where you think we should go on our next scenario. I'll catch you at the next stop. 